All right, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're going to be learning about daylilies, an old-time garden favorite. Jeff Breitenstein is joining us from the Austin Daylily Society. Welcome to the show. It's great Thank to you have you here. These are old-fashioned favorites, and a lot of us, I think, who have grandmothers or moms who gardened mm -hmm. have a special affinity for these plants. Absolutely. When we're at Zilker Garden Festival, mm -hmm. um, typically people will come up to us and say, my mom had these or my grandmother had these. Yeah. So we're kind of reintroducing them to a new generation. Yeah, well, and there's co good cause to reintroduce them. They're yes. tough plants. They are. And as lush and as full as they are, mm -hmm. They don't really use a whole lot of water, right? No, they're very drought tolerant once they're established. Um, yeah. Very little water once a week. Yeah, and all different kinds of uh, daylilies as well. Yeah, so here we have a yellow one. Mm -hmm. There's pinks, there's reds, purples. Um, yeah. Almost blacks. Almost blacks, yeah, yeah, real inky black. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you name it, and the color combinations too. True. And the forms of the flowers. Yeah, this is kind of a typical form. Um, there are spider forms as well. Yeah. Um, some of them can be as small as a quarter and up to 12 inches across. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big one. I've that's never a big seen one. a 12 inch daylily before, but I can imagine it and I think it would be beautiful. Now, uh, for people who, uh, who are intrigued by these plants or just have that kind of connection to them, um, what are some of the growing recommendations here in Central Texas? I mean, where do they perform best? Sure. So they do like well-drained soil. Mm -hmm. They will tolerate most soils, but if you if you have clay or caliche, amend it a little bit mm -hmm. and they'll do better. Yeah. Uh, they do need six hours of sun, mm -hmm. and morning sun is best. So if you can give them a, a sunny spot in the morning and protect them from the hot afternoon sun, yeah. they'll thrive. Yeah, they'll actually burn a little bit in the they hot afternoon. They will, especially yeah. some of the darker colors. If mm -hmm. you have that dark inky black, right. After a full day of soaking up the sun, it'll look a little tired. Right, right. So th they typically bloom, I think of them as a kind of mid-spring mm -hmm. uh, plant where sure. they really put on that big show, but some of them will continue to bloom during the course of the year. Yeah, and when you buy a daily, it will note if it's a rebloomer. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the typical bloom probably late April through early June. Right. And then they'll bloom again September or October. Right. I had one bloom again in December, which was kind of odd, mm -hmm. but fun. Yeah, well, and, you know, most of them are evergreen, the, at least the ones that do best here in Austin, sure. right? right? Yep. Yeah, evergreen or semi-evergreen varieties will do the best. They'll retain the leaves all season long. Mm -hmm. uh, the dormants do better in northern climates, yeah. um, so we tend to stay away from them down here in Texas. And when you say dormant, they just, during the wintertime, they just go under. Exactly. I don't remember having to, do, I, I used to have a large collection of daylilies, and I don't remember them being too fussy about fertilizer, but I probably use like a foliar feed. Is that adequate? Or? Yeah, foliar feed's great. Uh, yeah. Liquid seaweed is a great foliar feed. Mm -hmm. um, in the spring and the fall, you can also add some um, additional fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And on the Austin Daily site, we do have tips for Central Texas growers okay. with a number of options there. Okay, so it, it, again, no big deal though, really. No in big terms deal. Of, yeah. yeah. The and general fertilizer will work well. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I recall that I used to have to battle aphids almost every spring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your what's your secret for dealing with those? Persistence yeah. is the first thing. Um, a good spray of water will knock them off, and then right. insecticidal soap is your best bet. Yeah, that's what I usually resorted to. But yeah. you know, I've gotten to be such a lazy gardener now. I just blast things with water. Yeah, just that'll work. On, you know. So uh, really, we've just pretty much described the care right there. It's yeah. like you know, one thing though that these uh, makes them especially endearing to gardeners is they're great pass along plants. Yes, they are. You know. um, they're easy to divide. Mm -hmm. um, best time to do that's in the fall. Right. Um, and after about three years or so, you can basically just rock the fans apart mm -hmm. and be able to separate them to form a bigger clump in your own garden yeah. or pass them off to neighbors or family. Yeah, very easy to divide. Just lift them gently. And, and as you indicated, just kind of, you know, yeah. roughly, uh, you know. They'll just kind of separate and yeah. they'll have standalone plants. Right, and they're good in containers or in the ground. They're excellent in containers. Um, mm -hmm. This one, Stella de Oro, does great in containers. You can find it at most of the home improvement st uh, stores. Mm -hmm. And if you put it in a 14 or inch or larger pot, they'll mm -hmm. do great in the patio. Yeah, so, and you, and they, they pair so well with other things because you have the nice bright green foliage that's mm -hmm. kind of a spray shape, grassy look. And the, of course, the blooms that stand up above that, but then you could plant things around them. What are some good companion plants? Uh, you can use any kind of trailing uh, mm -hmm. material. Um, they go great um, in our own garden. We typically plant them with coleus in, mm -hmm. in garden beds. Mm -hmm. So when the daylilies are done and we just have the leaves left, the right. coleus start 
with that hit of color. It extends to a lot of the xeric plants that a lot of people are gardening with now. True. Right. Because of the low water needs, they can mm -hmm. do well in a xeric bed. Mm -hmm. um, they could do well uh, also with succulents. Yeah, well, I I've never would never have thought of pairing the two. Just perhaps in my mind, the lush look and the, the succulents, but nice to know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, there are a number of different forms of uh, 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 or, uh, daylily that are kind of new, uh, relatively new introductions. There's a group called the tetraploids, mm -hmm. and, and the, what I remember when I was planting mine, that they were the red hot daylily to get, and, sure. and they were. They're big, waxy flowers. Mm -hmm. what, what else is different about those? So it's a different uh, chromosome, basic mm -hmm. chromosome makeup. Mm -hmm. So there's diploids and tetraploids. Uh, the tetra tetraploids typically are a little fleshier, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger clump. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really have uh, differences in terms of how they, how they thrive here in central okay. Texas, okay. but the plant habit is different. Okay, so uh, uh, and when you say the, uh, the plant habit is different, is the the uh, the thickness of the foliage, okay. uh, the height of the scapes where the blooms okay. are held, okay. and kind okay. of the substance of the blooms themselves. Yeah, and they do come at all different levels in terms of the height of the bloom. Sure, right. Um, they'll be from eight inches up to challengers. I think almost seventy-two inches tall. That's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, now the the daily group here in, or a club mm -hmm. in in town is going to be actually hosting a, a, a national tour, and then you're going to have open days for so people can see. We will. Some of these gardens. Tell us a little bit about that. So this year, Memorial Day weekend, the 25th through 27th, we're hosting Region 6 of the American Hemocallus Society. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, 15 clubs across Texas and uh, New Mexico. Um, so it's kind of our convention, our regional convention. And then because our Austin members are doing so much work to get their own gardens ready on the, that Sunday, uh, we're opening the gardens to the public. Okay. So the public will be invited to see all these gardens here in Austin. Are you going to be selling or swap, letting people swap during that time? We won't time? be selling. No. Um, folks may have some divisions at their own gardens that uh -huh. they'll, they'll give to people that attend, but there won't be a formal sale. Well, and that is, again, I think one of the cool things about the plants is the gardeners who really start picking them up uh, really enjoy sharing and spreading Definitely. them around. Now, I understand that you've actually taken that next step and you're actually doing some uh, uh, breeding and, and uh, uh, creating your own selections. Yeah, my husband Scotty and I started with about 25 uh, mm -hmm. cultivars mm -hmm. and we found the online auction and that grew to a collection of about a thousand. Okay. And then we started cross-pollinating just for fun mm -hmm. and finding that we were creating some stuff that was pretty neat and got the bug. <laughs> so now we've been hybridizing and we've got about probably about a hundred set aside that we're Cross, crossing all the time with. Oh, that's cool. Now, when you say that we're pretty neat, describe some of your creations. I'd like to hear about that. So we had one um, that we named after uh, a friend, Helen. Uh, she's Greek. And it's a beautiful kind of yellow double daylily mm -hmm. um, that held the uh, pollen, uh, the anthers, on the petals. So it almost uh, looked like grains of rice. Yeah. So we called it Avgalameno okay. uh, of her Greek soup. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, again, uh, a lot of fun to work with and, and, and to, to play with, create, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a great plant for the average gardener. Absolutely. A, mixed into a, a kind of a mixed bed, these are, I think, like the perfect cottage garden plant in a lot of ways. I'd agree. Um, they, they definitely have that kind of old-fashioned look, because mm -hmm. um, they do harken back to a lot of our parents' and grandparents' right. gardens. They're super easy care. Um, mm -hmm. We always tell people it's probably the easiest perennial that you can grow. Right. They don't require a lot of, of care or maintenance. And then in the fall, there's not really a lot of cleanup either. Right. You can snap off the stems after the, they finish blooming. That's right. But that's it. Yeah. I understand you do have to protect them from deer, though. You do. They're like deer candy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, well, be warned about that. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on board and sharing all this great information about daylilies. My pleasure. And uh, coming up next, it's Daphne. Mm -hmm.